Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. 3D has improved a lot in Photoshop CS6 Extended. I'm going to show you how to place 3D text on a background, light it, give it a bevel, reflection, and shadow. This document is 3600 by 2400 pixels with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Make a copy of your background by pressing Ctrl or Command plus J. Call up your type tool and click on your character text box. Choose a font and click on your color box to choose a color. Type out your text, go to the top and click on the check mark, and then click the 3D icon. When you see this window, click Yes. This automatically extrudes your object and places it in 3D space. In the top left corner is a small secondary view that shows your 3D environment from various angles. On the lower left corner is a widget that moves your 3D object according to its 3D mode. On the lower right is a 3D panel listing all the aspects of your 3D object in space. There's the environment, scene, the text or object, light, and camera. When you click on each aspect, its respective properties appear in a window at the top right. You can also click on the 3D modes at the top to move your object in specific ways. This icon will call up your source light widget. We'll go over that later. To start, let's choose the rotate mode. Click outside your text or object and drag your mouse or pen around to match the angle of the grid to the perspective in your background. If you click directly on your text or object, a widget will appear showing three different colored arrows protruding from a small white cube. Let's check out what each one does. You'll notice that when you click on each section, that part of the widget changes to yellow. If you go to the tip of your red arrow and drag, it'll move your object on its x-axis. The small red arc rotates it like a carousel. I'll go to the red box. When I click and drag it, it extends or condenses the text. If you click and drag on the small center white cube, it scales the text uniformly larger or smaller. The box on the green arrow makes the shape of the text taller or squatter. When you click on the green curved shape, it changes to a yellow circle that will rotate the text like a pinwheel. The tip of the green arrow moves the text up or down. The tip of the blue arrow moves it backward or forward. The blue box changes its depth. The blue arc arcs it up or down. For now, I'll move it back in space, make it larger, rotate it around, and slide it across. You'll notice that it's below the ground plane. This is easy to fix. Go to 3D and snap object to ground plane. If you want to see a large view of its perspective from various angles, you can click on the upper right arrow to switch the main and secondary views. Let's give the front of our text a bevel. With the text highlighted and active, click on the cap icon. In the bevel area, we'll keep the angle at 45 degrees and the contour linear. You can also adjust the inflation. Inflation balloons the text. I'll slide the width of the bevel to 22%. You can also adjust the bevel and inflation with these widgets. For example, if you click on the inflation icon and drag it up or down, it increases or decreases the inflation strength. Click on your light icon. Immediately your source light appears. Clicking on the handle and moving it around changes the source of the light on your object. You can add a new light by clicking on this icon at the bottom. You have a choice of point, spot, or infinite. For now, I'll choose infinite. I'll move the source light and change the intensity to 5%. Let's create a reflection of the text in the water. Click on Environment. In the ground plane area, we'll keep the reflection white and we'll change the opacity to about 60%. We'll increase the roughness to almost 20%. Let's see what it looks like by clicking on this icon to start rendering it. Just one pass will give you a good idea of what your final 3D image will look like. I'd like to increase the visibility of the reflection. 
lighten the shadow and remove the front inflation but keep the bevel. In the ground planes area we'll change the shadow opacity to about 40 percent and the reflection opacity to about 70 percent. To remove the inflation click on the text layer and click on the cap icon. I'll decrease the inflate rate to zero and click on the render icon. If you're happy with the first pass let it fully render. It does take quite a bit of time so let it do its thing while you grab a cup of coffee or a bite to eat. Creating 3D objects are a lot easier now in CS6. In a future tutorial I'll go over adding custom textures to your surfaces. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.